Today, we're gonna to be building a stonework cottage. To start, you've already seen me cutting out these shapes. These are for all the stonework pieces. And I have templates for those. I'll have a link in the description. I'll go ahead and draw them up in, in Illustrator and give you guys a template that you can download. So there's gonna be a link there if you wanna download this house. It's a really simple cottage. Um, for the wood, I don't use templates i just cut strips and make the wood that way and then glue them you'll see how i do it all so first off i want to texture all the outsides of these pieces so let's go ahead and do that okay these ones we're not going to have stonework these two pieces i shouldn't have even textured those these are going to be hidden inside the house. So don't worry about texturing those. You can texture it with a pen if you want, or if you prefer, you can do this whole method. And I've made this little tool. You've probably seen it before if you've been watching my videos. If not, it's a good tool to make. It's basically just a sharpened paintbrush handle covered in millipa and aquarium gravel. Super simple to make and it's super useful. My blade's getting dull. Whoops. Pretty sure that was an Etsy notification. So if you wanna check out my Etsy shop, you should do that. It's fun stuff. If you don't wanna build these, I sell these on my Etsy shop. This is one of the things that I sell. So yeah, there's our stonework wall. That's more brickish, but it's gonna be stone as soon as we paint it gray. Same thing with everything else. We're not being too accurate here. Probably a bad idea to do this this quick, but I do that a lot and then I'll end up having marks. So try not to do it too quick. Some of this is gonna be covered by the wood we're gonna to add to. So we're gonna add these little support beams on the outside. Stuff like that. All right, now for this one, we're not gonna do the top. The top is gonna to be wattle and daub, I guess. That's my imagination thinks at least so we're just gonna do that if you're doing your stuff at home you don't have to use the template you can just use the same kind of deal that I'm doing the template I just use because I want to be able to make the same thing over and over so I don't struggle to remember how I to remember the measurements and all that stuff And that's all the bricks we need except for the chimney. So I'm going to hurry and do this chimney. And then for that top, I'm just gonna press that in with this, like so. Should be good enough. You could also use a heat tool or whatever, but this, might as well not get a heat tool out just for one little piece. And there is all our stonework and our support for the inside of the house. Okay, so you can make little tools out of aluminum if you want. If you want to vary the stonework just a little bit, just square it off one end. Try to square it off. I got this little hammer I'll square it off with. You want it to be pretty dense where the bottom is. Okay. 
like so. See that? So, if you want to add some variation to this stonework, you could just push in some of the bricks. Okay, that's not quite as sharp, sharp as I want it, so I'm gonna sharpen some of these edges a little. Okay, just push in some of these bricks at the corners or whatever. If you want to spend a little more time making the making it look realistic. I'm just gonna do it on a few. A few should be enough variation. You'll see, that adds quite a bit to the wall, honestly. And I don't always do this. So this customer is gonna be getting a special treat. But it looks really good. And I've actually started doing it more and more to all my walls. Just because it gives it that realistic look. A little bit more realistic. It adds variation. I don't know if it's a realistic look or I just like the variation. I'm not always a fan of realism, so I do like the variation though. It gives more detail to look at. So I might as well just finish this off and do it to a few more. I'm gonna plug in my glue gun. And while this is heating up, I'll cut some strips of wood. And they're gonna be super thin. You'll see how thin. I'm gonna make, so you'll see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna do some wood that's like a centimeter thick and some that's a little bit less than that. So you'll see. Oh, and there's two ways to get the texture because I'm going to do the texture as I do it. This time I'm going to be using a metal brush, but sometimes I do use a little piece of a comb to get a wood texture. So it depends on how big usually. This time I'm using a metal brush though. You'll see. So I also need some one inch wide boards for the roof. This is about one inch wide. Um, these are gonna be boards that go underneath the shingles. So I'm not gonna texture them or anything like that. So let's go ahead and cut out six of these boards. And then I'll show you one other thing that we need to add to our arsenal. Okay, there's our six boards. Um, you could also use these as shingles. Just, you could texture them and layer them like this and use them as like the roof without having to lay shingles. But we're gonna use shingles and I'm gonna make cuts like this to it. I already have two of these. I usually use a variety, that way they'll kind of overlap over each other and whatnot, so. I'm gonna show you how I make them real quick. I'm just gonna make one. You can also buy guides to make roof tiles if you don't feel like you have a steady enough hand. But I like to just freehand things. I don't know why. It just feels more artistic, I think. You can also cut out individual shingles and glue them on like you're roofing an actual house. I used to do that, but I find this is a lot faster. And I get kind of tied up. I don't really like spending too much time on one thing or I don't know, I stopped doing it. And where I sell this stuff, I don't want to do that. So I want to be actually motivated to do the tiles, to do the houses, just like so. And with this, we, Want to use our brush on all this first. And then each side we'll use it on. 
This is why I don't really like using these brushes. They tend to have a lot of mess. I don't know. I just got a new brush, so I wanted to use it. Normally I use a comb. I'm gonna do each side of each of these. And just cut some thin roof tiles. Or shingles, whatever you wanna call them. I can't remember exactly how many I'll need. But even if you do like one, it's gonna be flipped. So they're not gonna line up exact, so it's gonna look good, if that makes sense. You don't want all the shingles to line up directly on top of each other. All right, and then I save these for another time. That should be enough roof tiles. All we need now is a thin piece for the top. So you wanna make this extra thin and if you're scared to do this, you can also use just a piece of paper. But I like my whole house to be out of foam. This is gonna cap off the roof over the shingles, so. And I'm gonna make this metallic, so. You can do it however you want. You'll see at the end how, I, how it looks. Yeah, see, I don't really normally like to use the brush because it adds all those little burrs from the foam. If you breathe those in, they're gonna have a hard time getting out of your lungs. Okay, so before I get on with the next step, I also have these pieces cut out. These are for the windows and the door. This is just gonna fit snugly into the door. You can use the cutout from it, or in the template I also have this little square. These, normally, why are they so big? I did them too big. We can fix that right now. Just with this. And the other thing is you can do all this with a knife. There's no problem there. Let's cut that way too much. That should fit. So these should fit just fine now. Um, you can just use the cutout from those two if you have the cutouts, that's fine. But anyway, the next step, I'm gonna paint black all the interior. Um, this isn't gonna be, this isn't gonna have a playable interior, but I do want it to be strengthened with black paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now because normally when I try to do it after I've already assembled it, it's really hard to get to. So I'm gonna paint it black and then we're gonna let it dry. dry. I didn't paint the back of these. I should have. But we can do that real quick. Oh, well, you know what I also forgot? I also forgot to do the door. Let's hurry and do that. Okay. I'm just making wood planks on the door, simple door. Like that, simple wood door. So, we're gonna paint the backs of all these windows and everything real quick. Okay, let's hurry and build this thing. So I just do a wood texture on the sides of these. Like so. Just on the sides of these building ones. And then when we start assembling, we'll add this one and it's gonna look like a hole. 
wood texture, if that makes sense. First things first, we're just gonna throw up these walls. Oh, I almost did that wrong. Okay, like so. And you'll see I left I leave a little bit more space between this this wall and this wall. That way there's a little bit of a ledge where the wood is gonna be. And then we're gonna add these guys just for a little bit of extra support on the roof. Like so, we have our skeleton structure of our house. Okay, so we want one here. So I'm just going to pre cut these real quick. One there. We will go ahead. Add the glue. And then we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing on this side. These are more decoration than anything, but if you absolutely need it to be something, like something practical, these can be here to hold up the brick wall. the smaller boards these are slightly smaller up top just cut them to shape and I think it's better not to actually measure these and just cut them to shape because it's hard to get them accurate when you're just measuring I don't know if I'm making much sense with that but just kind of eyeball things works a lot better cut them to shape on the piece that you're working on. Everything will fit in place a lot better. And you don't waste your time with measuring. So no, no measure twice. What is the saying? Measure twice, cut once. I don't even measure and I cut once. So. That's the way of things. So that's how we're doing the eave or the angle, whatever this is called, the A-frame part. All right, now that's all our wood on our house. Um, I'm gonna touch up these sections real quick. Just add a little bit more grain to those. That way they blend in a little bit better. Come on down to our door. So here's our door. Here's some of our thinner wood. And we yeah, let's do this. We're gonna do a couple bands across the door. Like so. And like so. Okay. 
and we have ourselves a little wooden door. You can add nail holes or a little knocker or anything you want if you have the pieces. Um, I think today I'm just going to add a little nail hole to each. Like so. Like so. And then we're going to glue our little window sections in place. You can just keep the windows open too. That way you can put a light or whatever in them. Or cover them in parchment paper from behind. It'll look nice with the light that way too. But for these ones, we're going to have just dark. And I think I might have cut them good enough that I can just put them in there. And then the glue will dry them in after we get the grating in. And there is the front of the house assembled. Now we're going to move to the roof. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to each of these. And add our board. So there's our board. We're going to add each one. All six to this. You can just do like, if you're fast enough, you can just do the strip on each and then throw them up there. Just like that. Now we're gonna add the shingles. Shingles are pretty easy to do. So there's our bottom shingles. Throw them on our house. You can have these ones overlap just a little bit. If you overlap too much, they'll be prone to breakage. And then next, we're just gonna add another layer. Not that one, that's the same one. So you wanna choose a different one and add the next layer. So, I do that. And add our layer. And then just work our way up. So just go ahead and add your strips of shingles. It takes about five of these strips. These are like one inch, one inch wide, about a little bit less on some of them. But the max size of these shingles is one inch wide. They say chimneys are supposed to be a little higher than the roof. That way the roof doesn't catch on fire. I don't know how true that is. But I started doing them that size. Anyway, I'm just going to cut out some of these shingles. Before they dry too much. That almost fits. Let's take off some of this. That's perfect. See that? Cut that hole for the chimney. So we're going to glue that guy down. So that is the house so far. It's looking pretty good. Next, we're going to add this to the top. I'm going to get it kind of centered. I'm going to glue. I'm just going to fold it over. I'm going to glue here. I'll just fold the guy down. Nice and easy. It's thin enough that it'll just bend with the top of the roof. A little bit too much glue in spots. But that's fine. There is our house.
All right, that should be a lot easier to paint now that we painted the inside already. Paint black, that is. So that's a good thing. All right, so I painted that black and it's completely dry. I was gonna paint it yesterday, so it's the next day, but it's fine. And we're gonna do a really simple paint job. A pewter gray for the rocks, melted chocolate for the wood. First, I'm gonna go over all the gray areas. With these windows, I'm leaving black for now. I'm gonna add some grid to those in a minute. And I didn't choose these colors to be realistic. I chose them more as an artistic choice. You can do whatever colors you want. You can vary the bricks a little. Maybe we'll do that this time. You may notice I'm going one direction. Well, painting in one direction, mainly. Um, and that is to highlight some of these details. It's basically a thick overbrush. And you'll see, like right here, you'll see there's like the details of the rocks coming out because of that. I'm not going for an even coat. I don't want to waste my time doing a bunch of washes later to bring out the details. So anything you can do in one coat, save yourself the struggle or the time, I recommend doing so. So there's our gray. Now we're gonna do our brown. See, I'm doing sideways overbrush this time. That way I highlight the tiles a little bit better because if I do this way, it's gonna get in the cracks of the wood grain a lot more. And I don't want that. I want the wood grain to show. And there's some of these spots I missed with the black paint. I'm just gonna put the brown in there. It's hard to get all the roof tiles. And I've been using these natural hair brushes. Um, I just want to say I've been enjoying using these a lot more. I feel like all the dry brushing and stuff that we do and over brushing and bending the brush on these 3D objects, these terrain on the terrain really bends the brushes out of shape. And rather than these getting bent out of shape, they just wear down. If that makes sense. This used to be about that long. And as I've used it, it's just gotten more and more worn down. And they just get a little bit more stiff when they get worn down, which isn't always a bad thing. Get the door. I normally don't add those details to the door. I don't know, especially not with that big, big of a pen. I probably should have used something else, but that's fine. Still looks good. We are gonna add some variation to the bricks. And this is just gray too. You can do your bricks whatever color you want. We're just gonna add a few lighter colored bricks here and there. Okay, let's see, let's see. A little bit more. And then the last wall. And then I gotta remember to do the chimney. Okay. And there is the basic of our house. Next step, we're gonna dry brush a quick highlight. So I'm just using some antique white for that. Today I'm dry brushing with a chip brush. 
It's one of these cheap guys. And it's not quite dry, but that's fine. Just gonna go across all that real light. And I've wiped that off on a paper towel. And see, we're not even completely dry, but that's fine. That's fine, I don't care. It's still gonna look good, because it's hitting the tops of everything and not the cracks. And see these, I'm not trying to like, get in all the cracks and crevices with this dry brush. You'll see how that looks, it's like a little bit of a glow in the middle. That looks really good. So I tried to do that now, instead of, it's more of a controlled dry brush rather than dry brushing over the whole thing. And then last wall, the front. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna be using this granny grating. And you'll see, this was originally black and I painted some silver over all this. I don't know if it was silver. It was tin. This one right here is Extreme Sheen by Decor. It's pretty good. So we're gonna cut out how many we need. And yeah, for like a more decorative house, I would most likely do it this way. And if you use these with parchment paper behind or just these and put them in the window, you can put some sort of light source behind here and light it up and it looks pretty good. Um, these ones, these windows, I designed to be flush with the outside of all these squares and it's just going to be able to fit in there so let me go grab my glue real quick let's just add a little drop in each window spread it around and this glue is going to dry clear so we're going to have the black under it we're just going to add these guys into here and then push them down with some sort of tool. What are we using today? Let's just use a knife. Like so. Get the corners pushed down. We are painting the very top of the roof metallic. You don't have to do it metallic. If you're doing like clay roof tiles or something, you could just do roof tiles at the top bent over. Um, you could even try to do wood tiles like bent over at the top. I don't think I'd like the look of that. So I figured this little tin part of the roof caps everything off, holds the shingles in place at the top and prevents any leakage from the middle top. And there is our house. Looks pretty good. I'm going to set this aside to dry for a little bit and then I'm going to varnish it and then we'll get into the glamour shots. <laughs> 